Our project is an Australian government funded uh, research project and it's based on uh, translating the concept of the flipped classroom um, into actual classroom practice. So helping to build the capacity of academics to be able to one, understand the concept and then two, design their, uh, their flipped classes around a, a pedagogical framework so that the chances of them developing something that will succeed is actually quite high. Well, we were both um, fortunate enough to do um, postgraduate studies in online learning and as part of that we were actually looking at various ways that we can incorporate e-learning into our teaching practice. That was several years ago. Yes, or at least what, nine, nine years ago. And so we were doing forms of flipping that we weren't really aware of. We didn't have a name for it until other people told us we were flipping. And people began to sort of see us as um, somewhat of experts. I think because we were in some ways early adopters, we're not afraid of failing. If I had to give you a succinct definition of a flipped classroom, I would say it's about shifting the workload for students and providing them with more of the didactic type of uh, you know, foundational concept learning before class in a very sort of short interactive format. And then they come to class where they can be guided through um, some real life applications where they get feedback from their peers as well as from, from the teacher. What I noticed for my learners was that many of them came into my subject area, which is human biology. Some were complete novices, others had had quite a bit of experience. So the playing field was quite uneven. The flipped classroom model where students could get exposure to some of the key concepts ahead of the class time meant that those less experienced and confident students had a chance to um, have a good look at the material and feel more confident when they came to class. Well, some of the key insights um, that I've actually gained from working with colleagues from a variety of disciplines is the importance of having a support network, really, to be able to design your flip classes with confidence and getting that, that peer review as well. Some of the uh, challenges that we hear often in the workshops that we run with colleagues include the, um, the issue with letting go with some of the content. People feel as if they need to impart all their knowledge into these passive, passive students that would just absorb it all. And the other one is they're really frightened of the fact that what happens if students come to class and they haven't done the preparation? What do I do? And some of the uh, tips that we give them is number one, not to be afraid of letting go of some of the content because you really need to sit down and have a critical analysis of really what is it that students really need to know for them to have a good grasp of to then they can then go and sort of, you know, um, learn the, the content themselves. But most importantly is designing those pre-class activities have to be interactive, have to be short and not actually add to their workload. Sometimes I suppose to trying something new can be quite challenging. You know, when you're at university, you're seen as the expert in that field. And so people often don't want to look like they're out of, you know, their comfort zone with their students. They want to be in control. And we sort of assure them that you need to actually let the students know why you're trying this approach, um, give them some evidence why it's effective and ask them for their feedback to kind of include the students in it is actually a good thing and to not be worried if things aren't always perfect. I've become very much um, interested in the cognitive load theory of learning and that giving a lot of content in a didactic session is not going to be taken up by the students terribly well at all. And there's a lot of emerging scientific evidence that giving people a lot of cognitive load doesn't mean they'll retain half, they'll actually lose the lot. It's really challenging the model of the didactic lecture and it's been something that people who are now teachers were taught that way. So it's what they know in their experience of being a student. The framework that we use in teaching people how to flip is the very basic um, universal model that people understand is, is based on Bloom's Modified Taxonomy, which we've translated into almost like a design template or a rubric, you might call. And we've got very clear linkages. You need to link your pre-class to your class time 
and to your post-class activity. So it's almost like a three-phase approach, but over that there's an umbrella. And that umbrella is your learning outcomes and your assessment. So we've tried to decompose it, or no, deconstruct it, sorry, into these steps, but always remembering that it is a, a holistic approach. What I know is that students, once they actually get confident and understand that they're actually doing a lot better, it's almost like you could take that away because they actually then get it. When students come into a classroom and we're trying to deliver this whole new concept of learning that they're not accustomed to, we um, try and show them student testimonials of past students and we also explain to them you know, some of the, the, the research behind some of the techniques that, that the flipped classroom actually use to engage students. I guess for us, the, the best evidence of student engagement in the flipped classroom is when we have our later year students who come back and want us to supervise them to produce their own flipped classroom module to disseminate their research findings in their capstone projects. One thing that I really learned from today, running the workshop here at the University of Toronto, is that I need to develop what we call a one minute sales pitch to really um, give this message across to other academics but to students as well as to why we want them to learn in a flipped learning approach. I think people that are contemplating it should make the decision to give it a go and to just pick something that they are capable of doing, not to try and be so ambitious that they're going to lose their confidence. And that's really been the intent of our project.